We're back. 877-WE-BE-BIG is our number. Our fax line, 205-945-3999. The award-winning website is Rick and Bubba, spell out and dot com. Uh, go there for all the information you need about the Rick and Bubba show and then some. You can also order merchandise online at Rick and Bubba, spell out the word and dot com. Uh, we, we walk our way back. I, I guess this would fall under the category of animal story. Uh, well, Rick, it's it's just a stra- uh, terrible tragedy uh, horrible. off the oh, CNN.com webpage. Oh, uh, man. Uh, and I don't know the correct name of this uh, town. Taverns? Is that right? Taverns, Florida? T-A-V-A? I don't know. Taverns? Just what a horrifying story. Uh, a 10-foot alligator attacked and killed a 12-year-old boy who oh, was swimming. Oh, my God near a marina in central Florida, according to police. Uh, Brian Griffin was pulled under the dark water Wednesday minutes after two friends spotted alligators and screamed for him to get out of the dead river where they were swimming. Oh, my gosh. Wow, dead river? Uh, See, there's a... I don't want to make light, but I'm just saying, to me, just the whole term dead river... Yeah, is, I, don't, is, is, I don't go there. Uh, deputies and witnesses saw the alligator surface at least once uh, with the young boy in his jaws, oh, no. but the animal quickly disappeared across the river, the Orlando Sentinel reported in a story of Thursday. The boy was under for at least 25 minutes before a sheriff's helicopter spotted him and dropped a buoy to guide deputies who pulled him in. The boy was pronounced dead Wednesday. Uh, we saw gators all day, said the 14-year-old Justin Van Gorder who said he was swimming with Brian. Every time we saw them, we would just get out of the water. Justin said he and the other boys saw alligators and got out of the water, but Brian did not get out. Authorities said uh, they're dealing with more alligator complaints because of the reptiles uh, are turning up in and around rain-bloated retention pond ditches and canals. And you know, uh, tragedy that it is, Rick, well, it's horrible. Uh, it's I mean, not. You know, the thing is, though, and and once again, I have to ask our people, and uh, you know, I believe in conservation. I believe in management of the species. I know that the gator population was uh, almost uh, extinct one time, and you know, it's been brought back to a level now that we have just people being attacked. Constantly. I mean, we get a, what would you say, an average a story a week no, about yeah, something like sure. this? Yeah. You know, in the summer, more. And it's not just in southern Florida. You may remember uh, here, uh, even in the central part of Alabama where we are today, we had an alligator spotted crossing the road uh, at uh, very close to a amphitheater where, you know, a lot of people are, and there's a, uh, there's a creek, but it's not a swamp. No. And... Uh, so, you know, I, I just question our management on this if we have not swung the pendulum too far the other way, which is what we usually do here in America. If we have a problem, we will completely fix it to the point we overdo it the other way. Well, and, and again, here you have to look at I know these are kids and they're teenagers and, and, you know, you're not the smartest at that point in your life, but the first time, first of all, the convincing of getting me to swim in the dead river is a tough sale. But let's say you get that done, okay, and I get in. The first time we get out because of alligators, the very first time. Yes. That's it. Yes. I mean, well, I'm done, and we're, yeah. we're, we're in the car, and we're driving to a nice public pool. Because if, if one's going to get me, it's going to have to come on in a swimming pool. Yes. Step over a couple of uh, people sunbathing and get into the chlorine-filled water to get me. He's probably going to have to have a weapon with him, too, and be a pretty good shot. Yes. Um, Rick, it's just, you know... I mean, that's his so, world. That's his world. Oh, I know. They're so deadly, and they're so stealthy. Uh, I Ten mean... feet long. If they're in the area, period, uh, you're in danger because they could easily get you without even coming to the top. I mean, they could just, you know, get you from below, and probably that's what happened here. Oh, yeah. Well, he, they don't just always come towards you like a log in the water. No. You know? Well, when they go under is when they're serious. Oh, I know. I mean, I mean, they're making final approach. And they, they swim, like you said, very stealth. And the thing, I mean, if you hung him from the basketball goal, his nose would touch the court. Oh, I know. A monster. Big boy. And, 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 and he's coming through the water like a rocket. I mean, you don't have a chance. It, it's a tragedy in not making light of that, but it's... Uh, 
to me, I just feel like, and I don't know who's making the call on this, but I feel like we've, we've missed our call here a little bit on the management of this particular species because you just you, there's too many of these stories. All right. And I guess it won't matter until somebody who has a congressman's ear or somebody who is an elected official loses somebody in their family, and then they'll do something about it. Because, yes. look, I'm just going to be honest with you. I think alligators are more of a threat than cell phones. Yeah, well, it, I, Personal I would, opinion. I would agree. And an SUV. Well, well, you know, but we will turn cartwheels about that. But we will just let alligators go like crazy. Well, Rick, if we see... Do we even have alligator items anymore, it, like shoes and, and purses? Well, and I, I think so, but they, they're grown for that on special alligator farms. Have you ever seen those specials where they have, like, these big butler buildings, and they flip the light on and go in there, and they are just like no. worms in there. There's so many of them. No, I haven't seen that. Woo! Yeah. And I tell you what, the guy feeding them, uh, one word, you, you better have a good footing, because if you slip, it's over, baby. Oh, yeah. Hey, baby, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to grow anything that could eat me. Well, and I don't understand this deal of trying not to let an animal go extinct that can take us. See, to me, being the top of the food chain, if you've got one that's giving you a little trouble, yeah. you, you try to eradicate him. Look, have a few alligators down in the very southern part of the state in a pond with a fence around it. I mean, uh, to me, that's enough. You know what I mean? I know killer bees think so, too. Mm -hmm. so he, you, know, you know that you got to see this video-type stuff, that the little TV shows that are on Fox, News, uh, Fox Sports South and all that. Um, and they're on any channel, I guess. you got to see this, or whatever. It shows, like, oh, yeah. wild oh, videos. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. It shows this alligator guy, and I guess one of his stunts is that the alligator will open his uh, open the mouth, and he will stick his head in yeah, kind of sideways. He deserves to die. And it shows it. And I'm, I'm talking about it, it zooms in and shows it. He's He gets that head up in there, and you can hear the guy on the mic. And now, never before, and all of a sudden, that alligator, boom! clamps down on that head and that guy starts like a fish out of water trying, well, to, get out, see that trying to get out of that alligator's mouth and he finally does but after about 10 seconds which i'm sure was just excruciating pain i mean oh the, now the, the, the clamp down is vicious now, now they I don't mean, have a lot of muscles to open it up that's the key you got to keep them from getting open to start with yeah but when they and when they start rolling with you oh, that's when they, yeah. he he you mean the washing roll. machine move let, let me tell you something the, the worst, agitator the worst one i ever saw was a guy tried to get one out of a pond Mm. It, was, it was, you know, what, too too much in a residential area. I don't know what he was thinking. God bless him because he's no longer with us. But And he his plan was I'm going to throw a rope in there and lasso him and pull him to the side in a little uh, flat-bottom boat. No. And he put that rope on him, and that alligator said, well, no, I think you'll come in here with me because I'm real strong in this water. What are you doing? And jerked him right in, and it was right in front of camera crews from t from the local TV station and everything. Well, it, it, you know, Is that why he's not here anymore? Oh, yeah. It, it's they, like that guy that, 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 that got him? Oh, yeah. We got to watch the old row and his shirt start coming apart and all that. You it, saw it? Oh, no, I was I, I've seen the film. Oh. It. No, I wasn't there. You know, the alligator guy, what's his name, Steve? Uh, yeah. yeah. Or Steve whatever, and all these I mean, he thinks he, so. he's on borrowed time, y'all, because you have to be undefeated. When you do that, okay. Well, I mean, and but even the great Boston Bruins, and and you know all of it, the, they eventually will lose a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, his. And you his, can't stay undefeated. But his his obsession with them borderlines on 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 illegal. I mean, I mean, some he he loves them more than a, a man should. If you follow me, I mean, it, it's a little bit. Well, you know, the Australian Zoo it flooded a, a, a year or two ago, and one of the big problems was is the fencing they had up around the the a gator ponds. Where it started flooding so high that it was above the fence and so the gators were just floating out and and the guy that he has run the zoo, run the zoo called him in and said hey we got to catch these things before they get loose and it, it shows one of his buddies getting clamped down on on his hip and how about this steve not even flinching jumps the fence and starts trying to tackle the alligator to get oh, him off his course you, you see i mean the, the whole the idea world, here, you know <laughs> the idea that we could actually sue tobacco companies for killing us the idea we could sue fast food people for killing us. The idea we can sue gun manufacturers for killing us. But yet we're going to let alligators run loose in our neighborhood. Please, somebody, show me the logic. What if we had a hunting season for alligators? It says, it says Georgia's going to have one. Mary says in Douglas, Georgia. Mary, what's up? Hey, Ricky Bug and Monkey Grass. Thanks, Mary, thanks. welcome to thanks, the program. Thanks, buddy. Hey, oh, uh, yeah. I saw in our local newspaper that the state of Georgia is going to have about two weeks in July for um, killing alligators. See the alligator season. They're out of hand, so they've said, look, we got to get a handle on this again. 
Yeah, I was at a meeting at the club the, yesterday, the homeowners, and they were talking about on one of the holes there, three alligators you can see them five out of seven mornings. One of them's eight feet long. Mm. Just come uh, up there, son. Now, you're talking about a homeowners association, and you may, is that a golf course you're yeah. speaking mm-hmm. of? Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Rick, they're living on the golf course. They're on the green. Okay, on the golf course. So their fear of humans is gone. They're afraid. They're more afraid of you than you are of them. Doesn't appear. Doesn't appear so. No, no. Not if I'm in the water. Anne in Hattiesburg. Anne. Hello. Good morning. Good. Hey, how are you doing? Monkey grass. Thanks Welcome. For Thank you. Um, I wanted to let you know that I read in the paper that. It reported that these pe- people have been feeding these alligators. Oh, I'm sure. Treating them like pets. I'm sure. And then they reported that some kids were throwing rocks at them earlier. Mm-hmm. And so, the same, the same mean, story? Uh, yeah, same story. Well, I mean, alligators... I mean, alligators were wild animals. Yeah, alligators are in the water. Well, they're probably trying to shoo them off by throwing no, rocks at them. No, they were tormenting them. Uh, yeah, and the alligator said, how about this? I've had enough of that rock throwing. That's it. Well, how about this? Yeah. Don't swim with alligators, bottom line. That's it. That's or I mean, if where I'm at there is an alligator, I'm going to pelt him with a rock, too, if I don't have something better. <laughs> I'm suggesting a go- above the ground pool. Well, you know, if you're in a lot of places in Florida, that you go out there and they'll be, you know, floating around in, in your pool. <laughs> I mean, you used to worry about somebody peeing in it, and now, you know... <laughs> Honey, call the service. We got an eight footer out here. <laughs> <laughs> got to clean it up. We got a party. <laughs> we'll be back. Killer bees will join us next. Hang on. Beautiful day here for homecoming here at Jacksonville State University. Rick and Bubba, the television show, and Bubba, we're standing by with our official driver for the parade today. Rick, this is E.C. Baldy Wilson. Baldy, this must be a big day for you. It's a wonderful day. It's a big day. Now, I noticed you got your car kind of fixed up here just for the two sexiest fat men alive. I did. I had air shocks uh, installed, and I have 110 pounds of pressure in there. <laughs> Do you think that'll be enough? It may not be. We'll go by the service station. Another thing I'm concerned about. Bill, I'm looking at the back of the car here. Is it big enough for our buttockses? That is a good question. We'll soon find out. Hey, we're getting close to parade time, and boy, what a beautiful day it is today. Bill, I just can't talk enough about it. People, please, we're filming a TV show here. We're filming a TV show. Please move along. Keep the traffic moving. There's nothing here for you to see. (laughs) Stay tuned, because there's more all-new Rick and Bubba on the way. Yeah, I know, I know. And you have some people, too, that are squeamish that'll that'll tell you, yeah, but I wouldn't give CPR to a stranger and stuff. It is very rare that we would go on a call where people were not with friends or family when the thing happened. So that's just, you know, just just something that, through experience, that I saw go down many, 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 many times. Have you seen these automatic defibrillators now? No. They've got them I know they have them. We've had like three incidents this year where somebody at school through one situation or another uh, that that had to be used, and it saved their life. Now and and it's the, automatic. I mean, you t- you hook it up, and it decides whether they need the shock or not. Yeah, and I was going to say that. That's an important thing. You don't want to defib them unless they need that, because right. then you do more harm than good. But hey, they're automatic, and they're going to start. They got them on all airplanes now. They're going to have them, and uh, they're they're going to market them for homes too. Uh, I mean, that first few minutes is critical, as you know. There you go. The Rick and Bubba Show saving lives throughout the world. There it is. I'm going to get one if they, if they ever get it down about. to about a page your size. Just yeah, keep, keep it, it on your pocket. belt. Keep and just keep pocket. it wired up, ready to go. Of course, I'd lose mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, with, it's, with, it's with your wallet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, uh, Bees got a new CD. It, it just came out. It's on his website, Killer Bees. And Bees is with a Z. B-E-A-Z, because I didn't know any better. Yeah, uh, Save Up is the name of it. And it's out now. We'll come right back and talk about Bubba, it. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. <laughs> It is 15 minutes to the top of the hour of the Rick and Bubba Show. I be Rick. And I be Bubba. Good morning and happy Friday. Too. Killer Bees is with us. If you are listening to us or watching us in Huntsville, uh, he is going to be there this weekend, Saturday night at the Hilton in Huntsville. Uh, if you can get your tickets at the Hilton, of course, or at Railroad Bazaar. Two shows uh, coming up tomorrow night, 7.30 and 9.45 Central Times for Killer Bees. His new CD is out. 
uh, on his website, Killer Bees, and bees is B-E-A-Z dot com. It's probably a link off our website, too. Yes, it is. At Rick and Bubba. Under comedian. Under I'm a betting. I'm a betting it is. I bet it is. And then, you know, here's the thing, though. Uh, your, your battle cry has been save up. For many years. I bet I, I've been Hello. doing stand up for 21 years. I bet I've been doing uh, save up for about 18 of it. I have, t- like that. I have a two fold save up question. Okay. Number one, how did you come up with save up? Well, I, it, it was an easy thing. Uh, when I started stand up comedy, I lived in Jackson, Mississippi. And as I would travel, I'd ask people if they'd been to Jackson. And of course, they're like, what the heck for? Right. And I'd say, if you've never been, save up, go for that second honeymoon. Oh, okay. So I would do it to open my act each time. So I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin one night and uh, did my save up line. And a few minutes later, I was talking to a, a table up front to a couple there that was married and a uh, the lady said that they had five children, and a woman in the back of the showroom yelled, Save up! <laughs> and the place just went nuts. I went, That's it, right there. So I used it about 20 more times in that little 15 minute segment right there. So uh, it, is, it has become kind of a catch all phrase now. 21 you years know, you've been 21 using the phrase. Years. I've uh, uh, been using it about 18, been doing okay. stand up 21. All right, so 18 years it's you've funny, been screaming. funny, my mom has been screaming that for almost uh, 40 now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, telling you so. to save up. <laughs> so 18 years you said save up. Correct. And 2003's CD is called Save Up. You just now decided to call a CD that? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. And here's you see, the thing you see about where I'm this going, CD. You just now came up with that? Well, and here's the thing about this CD. We recorded a similar CD, a lot of the same material, in about 1995 okay. when I was uh, under, the, uh, under contract with Sony Records on the Columbia label. And that CD was never released, and then I had to wait seven long years <laughs> to regain ownership of that material. How about record deals? And oh, my gosh. How about, how about record labels, man? I love them. Bless their hearts, but they're kind of like loan sharks, well, if you know what I mean. We're but, uh, going through that, too. It's good, it's bad. It's good, it's bad. You understand what I'm talking about. So, so well, how all these well, years later... One. Well, try yeah. this, Killer. Try what this if you, one, what Killer. If, what if you put that CD out, it went very good, and then you just never got a check? Yeah, how would you like your distributor to go, well, to say they're going bankrupt, but they never really have, but they won't send you a check, and you've sold about 15,000 copies. Well, who knows how many times that happens, man, because all the stuff, your advance that you get when you sign and all that what? comes what is that? out that, of it before, the, we didn't get before you get any profits. You know? well, As a matter of fact, way, way back, I recorded a song called Save Up with the Leonard Skinner Band, a racing song, and uh, it is currently... On a website, there's a website that has NASCAR jokes on it, and the music bed under it is that song <laughs> with me and the Skinner Band. And uh, I, I, it, me and Ed Keene, the guy that wrote Sweet Home Alabama, oh, yeah. and Mike Estes, one of the guitar players for Skinner at the time, wrote it. And uh, I never saw a dime from that one either. And uh, mm. so it's, uh, you know, the record business is a pretty weird thing. Showbiz, what the heck were we thinking? Well, it, what's yeah. weird is when you're well. in, where I'm in Walmart now, and I find myself trying to keep people from buying that CD. I feel <laughs> weird. You know, that's a strange, you, you know it's going to somebody else who's never going to give you your money. i tell you what was cool. Well, somebody, I tackled a woman yesterday who tried to buy it, and I said, no, get it off the website. <laughs> <laughs> what, was she cute? <laughs> well, <laughs> was not, she cute, really? Not really. Well, don't tackle the ugly. <laughs> well, don't, don't. They bruise easy. But uh, the, the it's harder to you, bring down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to you got to roll when you're tackling, <laughs> making fun of you. Um, what was I going to tell you just then? Oh, um, I have no idea. Uh, I have no darn idea. CDs, CDs Ed King. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it was, and it was going to be great too. Whatever. Hey, like. I have a oh, question. Oh, I got Napstered. That's what I was going to say. And was, and was so flattered. Yeah, uh, somebody called me and goes, please, li- listen to this. And played it. I got, I got a nap through it. I was like, yes. You know, everybody goes, well, won't you hack up? No, man, I was flattered. <laughs> well, that's like us. You know, the CD thing is not the, the, the it's, it's not the bulk of the income. And we were like, hey, well, hey, I just got your stuff off now. So I was like, <laughs> Yes, I same here. I'm like, I can't believe somebody loved it. You know, they, they love me. How, how did I get there? Yeah, so that was real cool. Well, we kind of did the same thing. We just let people have the CDs and never got paid. Right. So it's right. really sure. the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah so, really, we did Napster a different way. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were Napstered in stores. Yeah. Uh, but listen, we got to give credit. Th- this CD was recorded um, at the Ritz Theater in Florence Shoals, Alabama, where you hear us on 1035. And we always tell people to scream, stay in it at any show. But it's, not inappropriately. Not inappropriately at the appropriate time, which this person does. Not while they're trying to do their act, but when everybody's laughing or clapping, if you can get a stay in it, then of course we give you props. Now we got to find out who this guy is. So if it sounds like you, you know, we want to hear from you. I'm listening to B's new CD, and I'm laughing, and I'm enjoying it. 
and all of a sudden he says something really funny. Everybody's just one of those where there's a laugh, and then there's a, a laugh, rolling laugh. A rolling yeah. laugh. And all of a sudden you hear, stay in it! I mean, just as is clear that, as a bell. Is that too cool, though, on man? On the CD. And that happens a lot. Now, do you have that? Do you yeah, have I got the, it. Can, right. we, can we hear that? Yeah, here it is, right. Listen, listen close. You can you can hear stay in it. Everybody will be laughing here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to admit that's that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty cool, that's, man. That's so I, he had good lungs. Yeah, yeah. And you did not know that was on there, and you no. just heard it. Letting, so I, no. I, I guess that put a grin on your face, didn't it? Yeah, I was just listening to it, and you know, then the first time I hear it, I go, "Well, I'm just, I just think I hear that." Yeah. And I backed it up, and I said, "No, that's clear as a bell." Well, we had done a couple of shows, and when we edited it down, because we had spoke once before about people. Uh, yelling stay in it and stuff and so we had the option to use that or not so we went ahead and used that because it was a kind of a tribute to our listeners you know I no, thought yeah. he was saying he been it yeah, it's I, I, I thought it was like a fork issue. Well, well, if you'd heard that bit, that might have been it. But no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Bees, you said this is probably the cleanest one you've ever put out. Yeah, I mean, I would give this a PG-13 rating. That, that's what I would say on this. And uh, I believe you would agree with me that it is not an offensive... Oh no, CD. It, now, and it's and it's a and it's a fun one too. Well, I mean, we're we're not prudes. I mean, we we we're we're Christians, and and I know that we all share the same beliefs. I don't believe in being nasty just for the sake of being nasty. But you know that there there's there's things in life that are funny, and you don't you know you don't have to be prudish about it. So my my level is is probably I, I have much tougher skin than probably a lot. Yeah, there's but some adult content in there. there is, but but it's, that's uh, basically the disclaimer for those of us who are not far enough along in their walk in. Right. So, but it, there was nothing on there that I went. Oh, I'm a. I'm gonna send. I'm right. I'm. I'm sending bees an email. How dare you get on here and put, promote that product? Yeah, well, so we did nothing, that. We did that on purpose. It was nothing know, like so. that. It, it. It actually. You know, there's some of it. That, and what I like about it, it's on track. So if there's a track that you go, eh, that's a little much for me. You go to another one. But and I think when we sent y'all the copy, did we not put a label on mm -hmm. that that's that that pointed out which tracks were yeah. uh, uh, appropriate for all formats? I, I bet there was. There hasn't been a long time in your career where you could sit down and type that many tracks. I mean, because it says these are all radio friendly for any format, and it's a bunch of. Them. Isn't that neat? Well, we did it on purpose, man. That's uh, and and, and a big uh, tip of the hat to my wife Terry, uh, my wife and manager Terry, who uh, oh, owns gosh. the company that books me. Yes. And actually did uh, so much of the producer work on that, and just weeded through all the hours and hours of tape, and uh, and put the thing together. So she really had done quite a bit of the of the work on that so she did a real good job and and as you know there she is right there gorgeous as i'll get out well, you know so that's that's my little baby doll right there well that, and that's that's what i like about it too this good quality how huh? sometimes when it's live concerts right. the quality you you, you go well, it's, a, it's no. a different mix yeah. for the electronic media than it is pa and uh rick was bragging on how good this was yeah well good deal good. man i good, appreciate it i like clear. that i like that henpecked hero song that is pretty that fun. is on the theme. That is a fun. It was co-written by me and a guy named David Lee Murphy, a country artist. Jimmy Hall from the Wet Willie Band sings lead vocals yeah. on it. Uh -huh. And yeah, exactly. And uh, Ed King from Skinner does a guitar work on that. So well, we'll uh, play that coming out of the top then. Oh, well, cool, man. That'd be great. Because That'd it, be it really, I listen to it in the car and I was kind of jamming along to it. It's pretty good. Cool. Yeah, it cooks, doesn't it? It really does. It, it's, it's got it's the a lot of It's fun. got a good hook. The chorus is real good. You know how you got to have a little hook. You yeah, find yourself kind of. Kind of want to sing along with it, and uh, so you did a good job. Fine. Who wrote the hook? Uh, David Lee Murphy. Oh, I thought you were talking about Street Corner Serenade. <laughs> <laughs> I said, did it, did it, did it. Whoa, 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 won't you feel all right? Did it, did it. We'll come back. And my boys have their black belts and come uh, We got to talk we about, that. about that. Yeah, we do. We'll ask about that. Bubba is thinking How's about that dragon on the arm. Did it heal up pretty good? Yeah, actually, they've got a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> chameleons. They're young. On, <laughs> chameleons on their arms because they're little. That's good. We'll be back with Killer Bees. His new CD, Save Up. Get it at Killer KillerBees.com. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. They all up in the house. Ain't nothing but a poor regular guy. Here's Henpeg Hero from Killer Bees' new CD. Y'all, my wife is addicted to magazines. That's in publications tell women how to control their lives, their weight, and their husbands. Great articles. My headache, my friend, or make your man dishwasher safe. 
There's testimonials. I had my husband hypnotized to think I'm the TV remote. Now he can't keep his hands off of me. Nut, 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 magazine. Whew, I'd throw them away if it wasn't for them Victoria's Secret ads. Impact Hero. Impact Hero. The hook, very Sounds good. good. Isn't that cool, man? Who's on the who's on the mouth harp? Jimmy Hall. Is that Jimmy Hall? Yeah. For design to get men killed. The cookbook says cover the bottom of the pan with grease. Y'all, the bottom. You want to know what the fireman told me? They meant the inside. Are you ignorant? <laughs> Fellas, it ain't easy telling your wife her kitchen is burning. You're saying stuff like, honey, let's go outside and look at the wedding pictures. Bring all your jewelry and the baby. No, 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 don't bother your mom. She's laying down. Her feet are hurting from standing on my neck all day. Impact Hero with a big double zero Got the monk hanging off his back I blame you, old son She's nothing but a poor regular guy Must hurt hell, but at least he tried How about a little love for the Impact Hero? How about a little love? Picture Eve going, ain't mighty dirty, please. Fred Flintstone, Paul Bunyan, Melissa Etheric, all in big heroes. <laughs> My favorite was Sitting Bull. His wife would tell him to put a new hide on the teepee. He'd sit there and go, ow. <laughs> oh, kill <okay, well>, <laughs> <him. laughs> There it is, Impact Hero from uh, oh, Save Up, the new CD. Get it at KillerBees.com. It's a link off of RickandBubba.com. It's out. In Huntsville, Alabama, you've got bees at the Hilton uh, tomorrow night, two shows. Uh, get your tickets uh, through the Hilton or at Railroad Bazaar uh, there in the Huntsville, Decatur, uh, Madison area. So, uh, And also, uh, shout out to the guy who screamed Stay In It uh, up in the Florence Muscle Shoals, Alabama area during the recording. Of Save Up. At the luxurious Ritz Theater. Beautiful place. By the way, beautiful place. It's in an antique area, a historic area. I mean, it went to heck a while back and ain't fixed it up yet. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, they... That's also translated old. Every day. And uh, so, uh, but Killer House of Family, I understand yeah. you were telling us your sons are now black belt. Yeah, That's we've been right. following this. See, when you came in, you would tell us they were, you now Bubba's thinking about, you know, where do you begin with a five-year-old? What's the best one? Right. And, and now, somebody calls it, well, Bees will know. Yeah, my, the advice, my advice about that is, is and, and, and this is a five-year-old you're talking about, right? Right. Um, I would, for one, not do the grappling arts because you don't want to stress those joints as they're growing and stuff. Grappling arts? Grappling, right, like, right like, down like the word jiu grappling. Jiu-jitsu jiu stuff like that, you know, right. the arm locks and stuff. Uh, but the main thing that we found out as we went to, to different schools in Mobile was uh, we found that the, the way to do it is, is go to a school where the parents can be involved as well. There were some places we went to where they... No, wait, would, I don't want to get flipped. Yeah, no, 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 I, I don't know if this for there, There's places where, where we would go and they would take the kids okay. in and close the door and the parents just had to wait outside. Uh, where we ended up going See, I was, like that format. Well, see, we don't like... We like <laughs> what we found out... What we, we call we it found the hand grenade. Out, Here, you take it. <laughs> what we found out was by going to West Mobile Gym Fitness and Kung Fu... They have a, a viewing area, bleachers, yeah. the parents sit yeah. there, and you get to watch the children, sure. and, they and and you learn along with them, kind of, and that gives you something to do with your child. Now, is that code name for your son kicking you in the growing? I mean, what is yeah. that? I, mean, I bet you've taken some kicks, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Well, see, the thing is... Because the Power Rangers will get you kicked. And, 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 it, get, and it gives you something to, to be able to... Um, share with the child you know as you watch them learn their different forms and stuff like that they practice them at home and stuff and you've been there watching the instructor right so you kind of know so, how to know help you're going to help you're gonna get kicked, the, the way gonna get kicked into growing is yep. what he's telling you yep that's code name for growing kids. mommy me and yeah, daddy's in there playing now he's laying in the fetal position saying go yeah. come get you again oh yeah oh yeah. and you do not want to hold a cookie sheet 
up in front of your growing and let them hit it with a rubber nunchuck. Because they have a wooden dowel center and they will bend that cookie sheet. I found that. We still have a bent. Remember that pan, honey, when I did it? Here, so it bam, like, oh, you have done that. Well, that's kind of stupid right there. That's pretty little son of all time. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> our, kids, our kids have uh, done it for about four years. Skylar, our youngest, started when he was four years old. So how old so, are they now? Uh, Trude is 13, Skylar's eight and a half. And they're and both black belts. That is correct. So what you want to do, you want to find a, uh, a school that makes it fun for the kids and it gives them little goals at a time that they can uh, uh, achieve. And that, and that is your, that, that's what you're after right now is them building self-confidence and, and respect. You know, the, yes, you had a they call, understand. You yes. had a caller from <laughs> Dothan that was in a, you had a caller from Dothan whose child was in a Christian-based yeah, karate yeah. school, which, which, I, which I thought was real cool. That's neat to see. That's what you want is is something that is very child friendly, not so much uh, the egotistical instructor, the iron fist guy, you know. Uh, and we, we ran all into saw some karate of those. Kid. We saw karate kids. Yeah, yeah, we ran into some of those as we looked. But you want to go where, where they, you know, go where they treat the kids like, like kids. kids. Yeah, and let them yes, have Master fun. <laughs> and let them have fun. Well, that, that's what it's about. You know, let them have fun with it and. Uh, and, and that way they'll develop the mind well, and the body. Well, let me ask you this. Is they're like black belts now, and you're laying there asleep at night, and you hear something, you think there's a prowler, do you go, honey, get the black belts up, and, and you roll back over? Yeah, do you see your 13-year-old in there? No, because, well, now, now, tell you what, Truett, he's 13, now, he's almost my height, and uh, he, uh, he is absolutely a wizard with his kicks. I mean, he is a monster. He's one of these guys that is stretched out like... John Claude Van Damme, and he can, you know, and he's got kicks over his head. Wait a so he's, minute! He's wait strong. a minute! What do you do? Let me ask you this. Good. good. I mean, well, don't you kind of have to learn it too? Well, now, see, I mean, I but did, because I mean, I you're stretching, but and I, as you, I don't want my thirteen-year-old going. I know no. your jeans a little tight, well, but what can you give us today? Well, can now, you stretch I'm out? Take that, that belt away from me, Dad. How about that? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you, it's hard. It's hard to whip a young and knows how to block. I, I know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, what I mean? instead of them <laughs> calling DHR, you're calling yeah, it. Yeah. Hey, my kid's whooping me. Get somebody up here. But see, I studied Shotokan karate Ooh. way back when I was growing up, and actually, when I went to uh, junior college for the three months that I went to yeah. higher education fought on the karate team so I was already in love with the martial arts you and fought uh, on a karate team yes I did as a matter of fact we were a junior college and came in third in the all south intercollegiate tournament one year and we fought Texas A&M LSU and uh, don't you know Beasley and, and all that so it was um, he was that little little fast guy you couldn't really get a handle on you they, know that, that's right I he was, was, he was that butterfly not, guy I was good at not getting hit I was I was good at not getting hit so uh all right, but is that right, no, Terry? Is he Terry, that good, really? What's the deal? Or what, what's going on here? Yeah, he does really good. He was talking about the block and stuff. And, uh, little Truett was in the back seat, and he was pinching Skylar and stuff. We're driving along. And so I'm trying to reach back and pop him on his leg. Yeah, like a mom should. And he's got the blocks going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, boy, we'll pull this car over. <laughs> we're driving down the road. She's trying to spank him, and he's like, choo, choo, choo. So, you know, did, you, words, did, you, did you have to say, young Jedi, you must choose when you use the force? Yeah, well, well to me, Mama what did you say? Well, Mama doesn't play that. So yeah. that's she, a whole different She fights game. dirty. She makes you look bad when you box her, because she's left-handed. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I can outpoint her, but in the ring, she's unorthodox. It makes, makes you look bad. So she's, she just she pulls a haymaker out from yeah, the left. You yeah, have to go well, straight. Yeah, you're like, that's not a proper punch. How did you black my eye with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then with the kids, you go, look, don't think I won't pull this car over and try to convince you to stop blocking and whip that leg. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and get this, and get this, when they got their black belts, the instructor awarded them kung fu swords. Oh, so now, no. So now, and look, with a kung Bubba. fu sword, you don't just poke with it. You know, you twirl and spin and stuff, and it's oh, like, yeah. how do you discipline a kid with a sword from a distance? Yeah, I mean, sure. that's why they invented cell phones. It's like, yeah. fruh, 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 hello, son, it's dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the kitchen. Put the sword down. That's my head by the fruit bowl. I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it ain't you'll put your brothers out. You'll chop his head off. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Somebody's going to get their head chopped off in and, here. And, and you know how kids always go. Somebody severs a yeah. limb. <laughs> you know how kids will go too far, and you come in, and everybody's 
shirt's got a Z on it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's the eighth shirt this week, son. Come on. Wait, I'm telling you, look, we have noon chucks, we have swords, we have big staffs all over the house. I mean, it's like if a burglar come in, we would be sued because he would trip over so much crap <laughs> and break so many bones, you know. That, well, so, how about picking the bee's house and the whole family, including the kids, just attacks you and what starts wailing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's screaming, get that year all off of it. And, and, and we've got a dog named Tsunami, a little malty poo, half Maltese, half poodle. She's from a mixed family, but we don't talk about that. Yeah, malty poo. And, yeah, her name's Tsunami. That's Japanese for wets on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> and has a lot of water. And has a lot of water. So it is a, it is a, it is a dangerous house, man. Can you it's imagine a, some thief comes back and says, man, I don't know what happened. I, I, I found this big house. It was kind of like a castle down in Mobile. And I we had a moat. The drawbridge was open. And I, and I, got I in swam there. across that, and it was full of alligators. Then I got in there, and, and, and all of a sudden the lights came on, and it, and it was like I'd, I'd come into the Power Rangers house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and look, you're here, look, and the kids... Power been, of the eagle. The kids are getting to scrapping, you know, and we'll, hear them, we'll go back there, and they'll both have a knot on their head from headbutting each other. <laughs> he headbutted me, did not, and they both got big old knots, so I couldn't hear him like, man, what, don't y'all get enough of that done at class? <laughs> How can it still be in you? Yeah, so, so we, I would highly recommend it. Get them in a place that is very kid-friendly, that loves the kids. Because cause they, they'll eat it up, man. And this it's a good program wherever you go. Any style's good as long as the instructors are into helping those kids believe in themselves. That, that's what it's about. Killerbees.com. Catch them tomorrow night in Huntsville at the Hilton. <laughs> uh, thanks for being with us, Bees. Terry, always a pleasure. May the force be with you, Killer. 7.30 hey, you guys, at man. 9.45. And get it on uh, Killerbees.com. And Bobby in the spotlight. Did any of you see the interview with Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown? I, I think she was stoned in the interview. I think she was, too. She had a touch of sweat going, too. If you're being accused of doing drugs, don't say, when you get a little upset, can I have a minute, I'll be right back. Yeah. What, what, what that, you need to say not was, if you're trying to beat that rumor down. No, yeah, what you right. need to say is, I need a minute, I'll stay right here. Right. I'll compose myself. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Bobby declared last night he's the greatest entertainer of all time. Of really? all time. After he told us he still smokes pot every other day. He's got to have it. Yeah, you know, how, you know how he, you know how he ended up in the interview with a handful of chips. You know, he ended up in the interview. He walks in and starts shouting stuff from the couch. No, Finally, right. Diane says, "Well, heck, come sit down." She asked uh, Whitney if uh, she said, uh, "Are you uh, are you jealous? Uh, uh, is Bobby Brown jealous of you?" And she said, uh, "Yes." And sometimes. From, yeah, sometimes. And then from the side, you hear Bobby say, "Never, never, never, never." Stay tuned, cause more Rick and Bubba's coming. We are back, uh, 16 minutes past. Our thanks to Killer Bees for being with us. Huntsville, Alabama, you'll enjoy, as always, Killer in town tomorrow night at the Hilton. Two shows. Uh, go to his website, KillerBees.com. Get his new CD, Save Up. We've got it a quick link off RickandBubba.com. Speaking of comedians, we've been talking about this uh, for the last several days that our very own Mickey Dean, uh, of course, was hospitalized with a, uh, a heart attack uh, this past Friday a, a week ago has been in the hospital, has had open heart surgery, had triple bypass, and we think he now joins us from his hospital bed. Mickey Dean! Hey, y'all. Uh, Mickey, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, my God. I am. I just got through eating a delicious breakfast. I bet it well, was... man, you sound good. I, I've been walking the halls uh, since yesterday. This is incredible. i got to start out. And, and you know, Rick, you, your father went through this. The, the care over here. Oh, and man. The things that they can do for you now is just incredible. Well, I, I even heard that you got a call from my dad as a pep talk the night before you uh, uh, they went in. Well, it started out as a pep talk, and then the more he talked to me, the older I felt. <laughs> <laughs> you still got it, man. <laughs> he said, you know, I... Before they operated on me, I couldn't go to the mailbox, mm. and and now I can walk through the woods all day. I said, yeah, but I don't want to walk through the woods all day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he said, well, you can come over and get my mail then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he still got he's it still from got the it. hospital Look, bed. He, Mickey, it's um, you know we um, we've been trying to update the best we can. Uh, we uh, we we tried to give you your rest uh, that you need because let's face it, as you found out when you walked probably yesterday. Oh. Wow. Uh, yeah, you, it's amazing how this affects your body and how you've got it on the road back, isn't it? it you know, they said, uh, we want you to walk right down there to that nurse's station in the back. I thought, well, I can skip down there. I can run down there. Halfway there, I thought, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make it. But, um, yeah, it, it's been... Uh, 
it's been quite an experience and and i want to apologize to everybody but thank them also for all the prayers and the cards and all the people that did get to come and see me it got overwhelming there for a while and uh i just get real excited when people come to see me yeah i decided maybe it'd be better not to well it's like uh, your daughter-in-law you know it was like she was trying to be as nice as she could by telling us, y'all don't come up here and make trouble. You know, it was like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, hey, do we need to come see Mickey today? Uh, why don't you give it a couple of days? Yeah. You know, well, it, I knew when Rick, they made you draw numbers and we were 231. Yeah. That, uh, that's, that's you know, it was the best we just stayed away. Sure. Right. It was a lottery. And you know what? They finally, what we caught people doing. Now, people are really, they're really clever. <laughs> they come in here and they won't tell them what room I'm in, but they walk out to the board and they look and they see my room number and then they come on down. So my name is now Mickey Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hard to figure out there. You never see that coming. No. Uh-uh. Well, well, Mickey, uh, we're just glad you're doing well and keep resting. Anything we can do for you? Well, uh, just just keep uh, remember me in your prayers. And I think once again, thanks to everybody. Goodness gracious. You, you, th- you know you got a lot of friends and you got a lot of family out there. But until something like this happens, it it just it was overwhelming and i've I've heard from so many people that uh, i haven't seen for a long long time and um if you got to have it done uh, this is a great place to do it and you know it's it's obvious that a lot of folks are in this business just because they're special people do you remember a lady by the name of hilda mickey yes at walker baptist uh where where they originally took you Uh um do you know you know she's just a nurse now or i guess i don't Uh know what what her job is but she anyway she was in the process of helping you um instead of just you know getting you in and out she is still calling me once a day getting updates on you Wow. I mean, that, those, so they really want to make sure that you're you're okay, and uh, and uh, so I want to thank Hilda and everybody at Walker Baptist for um, that's where you originally went when you you were uh, not in good shape. That's right. That was my first stop, and uh, now they put me over here with Doctor Gitter. He's from, I believe, around New Orleans, and you know what he you know what he said, y'all. I, I was trying to make this. He, he, they make it matter of factly. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I mean, they they make it sound like, oh, we just gonna do this. Maybe they do so many of them. And uh, I, he said, I said, are you really gonna stop my heart? He said, yeah, I got to stop it for a little while where I can work on it. I said, how do you get it going? He said, I'll just dump it a time or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, said, Mickey, Doc, Doc. I don't want to hear thump. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Ain't you got a little machine that, that, that shocks it or something? He said, nah, I just dump it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Mickey, a lot of folks are wanting to send you email, cards, plants, visit. Wow. I have I have just started telling them not to do that, and when you come back yes. to buy a ticket to a show uh, yes. when you're at the Comedy Club over Thanksgiving. Yes, we'll do some kind of... <laughs> we'll do... <laughs> you okay? We'll do, Bubba, oh, what I, have you done? I know, Bubba's making Bubba, a lot of money. Bubba, you just threw me into a spaz. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> or, call, or come to Fat Fest and see him. You realize Bubba said That's that Bruce it. had called him in a panic because he didn't know who to book for Thanksgiving. <laughs> now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he said, we, we're going to have Mickey and a bunch of other comedians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mickey, be careful. There it is. We're making hey, a laugh. Uh, a they bunch of other comedians and the uh, and, and coming back, Mickey Dean. The a Walker Hospital is a good hospital, but you know, any time a small town, and I know y'all from small town, everybody kind of makes fun of the small town hospital, don't you think? Oh yeah, always. They say all oh, the good doctors they go to New York or they go to Birmingham or Montgomery. Well, I had to have something come out of this, right? Right. I'm I'm in Walker. I barely know what's going on. I think at this time they'd already given me some morphine. They were doing the arteriogram, and they wanted me to look at it. Well, I didn't want to look at it, okay? For some reason, I don't want to look at a wire going up in my heart. No. But but I did hear one doctor talking to another doctor, and he said, Ooh, that one right there is completely stopped up. <laughs> Boy, that one really looks bad. Look at that one right there. It's got to be 90% stopped up. And all of a sudden, one of them said, We need to hear some we need to get this man to a hospital. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> man, hey, this Mickey. man needs some medical attention. <laughs> Mickey, that's great to hear, isn't okay? it? Yes, it is. No, but thanks to them, <laughs> they, 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 uh, they patched me up, and 
got me on here. So many people to thank. You just, you just can't do it. You know that, Rick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Just because when my dad was in this, the, the outpouring of support and everybody trying to help you, it, it, you know, it makes you realize that people, for the most part, uh, you know, are good and they want to they want to help any way they can, and and it really is a warm feeling. Now, let me ask this: Have you learned everything you could possibly ever want to know about JT since he's in a bed next to you now? Well, is JT coming up? Uh, oh my gosh! Well, he was, but he uh, he said he spilt breakfast on the seats of his car and he had to clean it up. <laughs> uh, so uh, did you? I, I got a coupon. Yeah, I keep you know, it. when you go through a successful one, they'll give you a 20% off coupon, <laughs> For the next? which it comes to about $43,000. Uh, well, well, Mickey, we were concerned, too. Uh, you know us. We like to look uh, very closely at the process, and we know they have to get, you know, veins from other parts of your body uh, to do the bypass. And, and, you know, you're such a skinny yeah, you, fella. Your legs are, are real skinny. We just didn't know if you had a, enough veins in your legs to... Uh, you know, to go, but we didn't know where they were going to get the vein from. Well, all I'm going to say is a nurse looked down after they pulled the sheet off them and said, wow, why don't you get it from right there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, they, Bub, you set him up. Well, well, uh, thanks for the setup, yeah, Bub. All the way to the hospital, man. Yeah, Bub, you'd have thought we had that plane. Yeah, sure. they, sure. they took it out of my go arm. Go to joke six. And out, of your, out of your arm? They took it out of my arm. It's from about my wrist almost to my elbow. Oh, my gosh. Um, but most people... I'm guessing probably your right one. Left. No, okay. <laughs> left. <laughs> uh, well, the good news, it was a good tan vein. You just got back. So. Yeah, Y'all going to make me bust a stick. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm going to stop. Mickey, this is where we need to end this. We're just glad you're doing good. Hey, how about I just throw out a big blanket? I love you, everybody out there. And we, if I can do anything for... Anybody. This changes your whole outlook now. Hey, I'm, Mickey, God ain't done with you yet. That's right. I don't think he is, and, and I'm not done with him yet either. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you once, and once we get uh, all the uh, the soap operas that's been going on out there in the weight room worked out, we're going to get you back on the right track. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to kill y'all. I, you, I think you've got plenty of folks to drive you home, though. I'm going to tell you like the old man. Did you, know I had an alter, did you know I had an altercation in the hall a while ago? No. I can't believe that. I got my walker. <laughs> well, you yeah. can't have that. I went down the hall with my walker. And I, went, had to use, I had to use the restroom. I came out. He had my walker. I said, you see that says Smith on there? He said, your name's Dean. I said, no. That's my second name, and he just didn't want to believe me, so I popped him. <laughs> well, Mickey's back. He's all right. Hey, Mickey, just keep your stress level down. Hey, Mickey, I'm not trying to say that Michael Reed is a, is a good friend, but um, I know he's been there supporting you, and once I heard him go through the weight room going, everybody's mad, I'll give you a ride. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lordy, <mercy. laughs> I love y'all. Thank you so much for listening to the I just, show. I just keep repeating. They won't tell me anything either. <laughs> Mickey Smith, good to hear from you. Thank you, it, buddy. It's almost like there's a, a, a there's a fight to see who can take credit for putting him there. All right, <laughs> hey, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey, you have a good day. Oh, it got crowded here, Tom. Bye, Mickey. We love, love you. Love you, man. Hey, what's your name? Love you. <laughs>